Jim, the conference we're at, FQXI, is focusing on events, uh, physics of what happens. Uh, uh, when you're dealing with quantum mechanics, when you're dealing with general relativity, the whole universe, uh, what is the importance and why are we focusing on this concept of events, which at least uh, 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 in normal uh, uh, conversation seems so obvious? Uh, I think um, when we have a, an actual space-time, that is, as we have in relativity, or right here today we have a space-time, uh, we sat down at a certain hour, right? That was an event, and that's the way it would be described uh, in uh, classical physics. But if you have quantum physics, you don't have a fixed space-time and a fixed notion of time and even a fixed notion of place, right? The world right. is four-dimensional, right? And so you can't have a notion of event that's exactly in the same way. Do you need to replace it? I don't think so. Uh, there is a tendency in people to think, work back from the ordinary language to uh, something that has yes. to be true in an area of physics which is very far from our experience. Uh, and that's true for a lot of words like happen, event, existential okay. words. But human language evolved over, let's say, several hundred thousand years with the focus of human beings or their prototypes on one particular class of things they could observe, which included space time. And so they could, the language incorporates assumptions about the limited range of their experience uh, in such a way that you could use the word invent in a sentence, happen in a sentence, and but it's wrong to infer from that that the fundamental physics has to be like that. In quantum gravity, we don't have a fixed space time. There isn't a fixed notion of time. So what could you possibly mean by event? That doesn't mean we can't explain how the approximate notion of event comes out, right? But it doesn't have to be fundamental. Some would say that the only way you can get an understanding of the nature of time is by events. That it's not events happening in time, but rather events are uh, creating or creating the emergence of time. So that gives a, an extra important uh, to the concept of event. As far as we know, right, the world is four-dimensional and the quantum mechanics is four-dimensional. So when we have a situation in which uh, we have a classical space-time, that is, we can have a history of things happening in time. You could call those events, I guess, if you, if you like, but it's not too congruent with the ordinary, the ordinary language. Uh, where space-time uh, is kind of deformable. It takes one form, and then it changes, and, uh, and so forth. And then there's another history where there's a different space-time. Different things, uh, even contradictory things, could happen in those, if you like, in those, um, I use the word myself, uh, happen in, in those histories. Only when you get to something that's correlated by classical space-time, that is, by the Einstein equations, in the sense that we're using the word space and time every day here, do you get a really clear notion of event and also what happens. So let's follow through on, on how you correlate then things, uh, quantum mechanics with general relativity because an event in both systems is so radically different. Mm -hmm. One being a point in four dimensional space time mm -hmm. and the other being uh, something that happens with the, with the wave function uh, in some probability sense with either with all different kinds of interpretations. So let, how do you correlate? Let me it? just clarify uh, one thing. It doesn't happen in the wave function. The wave function of the universe, for example, is a, sta a four-dimensional statement about what is basic, right, in uh, our particular universe, for example. From that, you construct alternative uh, histories of what goes on uh, in uh, in time, if you, if you wish. Uh, when those are correlated in time by deterministic laws, we call them classical, and then we have a notion of time and can define what you mean by happen. So a wave function of the universe, mm -hmm. which you have uh, done pioneering work, mm -hmm. uh, uh, kind of then correlates or brings together, in, in one sense, quantum mechanics and general relativity. That's the idea. That's that, the idea. It's not just our idea. <laughs> A whole large number of people are working on that. That's the field of quantum gravity, string theory, 
loop quantum gravity, and so forth, trying to unify the two great developments of 20th century physics, quantum mechanics and general relativity. So it's all over the place, and so people naturally assume that the wave function of the universe incorporates the gravitational to space-time degrees of freedom, and says, well, the probabilities for different space-time zones 